so now that we've got a good understanding of um, computing equilibria for a given game, we're going to look at what's called a repeated game. So if we if we start with the usual, so we have A, B um, defining one of the games we've seen uh, so far. But now we're going to call this a stage game. Okay, and the idea is that this game uh, becomes a repeated game when players play this game uh, for t periods. Okay, so in other words, we play the game once, then again, then again, then again. Um, as a running example, we're going to use this stage game. So nothing, nothing has changed. This is just the same as we've done before. And so uh, the pure strategies available to our strategies or to our players are just as before, R1 and R2 and C1, C2 and C3. So nothing, nothing too different. We can look at best responses and we immediately see um, that, that these are our, our best responses for, for both players. So we have two Nash equilibria, um, 0, 1 coupled with 1, 0, 0. And um, 0, 1 coupled with 0, 0, 1. Okay. Um, now, what becomes interesting is when we say, let's play this game once. And then let's play the game again. But the whole idea here is that we need to talk about what a strategy for the repeated game is. So when we repeat the game, what do we mean by a um, strategy? Um, and to, to clarify this, what we're, we're going to refer to these things as actions now. So these are actions. And a strategy must be given all the repetitions of the game so far, given that I know what you did the first time we played, the second time we played, the third time we played, what should I do next? So if we're playing rock, paper, scissors, and we've played five times, and we're about to play the sixth, and I know that you've played rock for the first five times, maybe that would give me some kind of inclination as to what I should do in, in the, next, um, the next round, okay? So to just formalize this uh, a bit, the notion of a, a strategy is um, it must be a map um, of the entire history of the game. So the union of the history at time at repetition t all the way up to t minus 1 to an action. Right, so that that's our, our, our definition. And h of t is history of both players and A is an action. Okay? So, in the example we've got here, we have to consider all possible histories. Now, we have that the union of h of t, for t equals 0 to t minus 1. Well, first of all, let's write down when t equals 0. So when t equals 0, when we haven't played before, then our, our history is just going to be the empty set. So the very first time we're going to play against each other, we know nothing about each other. Okay? But then we need to consider the second time we play all possible um, histories. So R1, C1, R1, C2, R1, C3, R2, C1, R2, C2, and R2, C3. Okay, so that is the um, all possible histories of the game. So this is all things the players could know. And so a strategy just becomes mapping each one of these things to an action. All right? Either to the actions of the role player or the actions of the, the, the column player. So, for example, you could say, well, the first time we're going to play, 
the, the row player is going to play R1. Then, uh, and I'm just mixing this up, right? Then, um, given that the second player uh, plays C1 or C2, then, then they'll play R2. But if they play C3, then, then they'll play R1. And we should theoretically map these as well. So let's go that they're always going to be R1 down here, even though the first play won't, won't, won't occur. Okay? Um, and that's what a strategy is in a, is, is in a repeated game. It's simply mapping the entire possible history of play so far, so everything a player could know, to an action. And so the idea is that you'd write down this strategy on a card, and then the other player, the column player, would write down the strategy on a card where they would have C's instead of R's and different different possibilities, obviously. And then you'd just be able to see what the players would do. And that's what a repeated game is.